Hi there everybody. So in today's video we're going to be doing preparing for universal credit and who can apply for it. So I'm sure you all have heard an awful lot about universal credit and you may very well be feeling extremely anxious about the application process but don't worry about it, okay? Um, in this series of short videos dealing with universal credit we're going to take you through uh, in small general steps about how to apply and what you need to do to prepare for it, okay? So, a little bit about universal credit. Um, this is a means-tested benefit and it is designed to be for people who are either in or out of work. Um, the age range for universal credit is generally between the ages of 18 and pension age. Now, there are special rules for people who are 16 and 17. Um, very generally speaking, there would be no entitlement for that age range, um, except in the circumstances either of disability or caring for a young dependent um, or in some way estranged from your own parents. However, if those do not apply to you, then the general age range would be starting at 18 um, and you'd be making your application there. Now, once you've reached state pension age and you know, effectively have retired at that point, um, you would not be eligible for universal credit, but you would be eligible for other pension type benefits, for example, pension credit um, or perhaps housing benefit, depending on what your circumstances are. So that's the broad age ranges. Um, now, in order to apply for universal credit itself, you are obviously going to need access to the internet, um, at least reliably, uh, maybe on your own home computer, and you're also going to need an email address um, and or a mobile phone. Um, these are the ways in which the DWP are going to communicate with you when you make your application through universal credit. Um, it's also the ways in which you get updates on your journal, and it reminds you to check your journal at various intervals. Generally speaking, I advise my clients to check their journal at least every three days during the universal credit application process, um, at least until you're satisfied that your, your payments are coming in and that they're all correct. Okay. Now, aside from those, there are categories of individuals such as students. Um, students generally do not have entitlement to universal credit. However, again, there may be entitlements for reason of disability or care of a dependent who's quite young. Um, in the first instance, if you are a student and you're wanting to know about universal credit, I would speak to the institution uh, student finance department in the first instance um, because they will have details of your applications either through SAS um, or UCAS or anything like that and they'll be able to give you some degree of financing help. Um, after which, you can then take that information to an advisor to see if there, if there are any other underlying entitlements to universal credit you might have. Um, if you are a British citizen and your status is not fully settled um, or you have visa entry conditions that mean you have limited access to the state welfare system, uh, then your circumstances are going to be very complex um, and most advisors may not have a specialism to deal with that. Um, in which case you would need to be seeking out an advisor either with specialist uh, in immigration or you may need to look at an immigration solicitor to help you through any process of applications that you're aiming for. Um, it is very difficult to advise individuals in those circumstances um, because uh, the UK transition period is coming to an end on the 31st of December 2020 um, and not all of the rules are in place necessarily to accommodate everybody's circumstances. Um, so if this is a category uh, that you find yourself in, then please do uh, seek out a specialist in immigration advice as soon as possible and take advice from that person. Now, universal credit itself can best be thought of as a series of interlocking elements uh, which apply depending on the circumstances that you find yourself in. Uh, so these sort of elements are the standard allowance for couples or single people, um, the eldest child and additional child elements, the disabled child element at the higher or lower rates, the limited capability for work or work-related activity elements, the carer's element, the child care costs rate, and lastly the housing cost rate. All the elements will have different rules depending on your circumstances, meaning that no two individual households are likely to have the same rate or for the same reason. Uh, so it's not usually helpful to compare yourself between your friends or neighbours or family. Um, if one of these elements or its rules causes a particular issue for you, uh, then please let your advisor know and they can discuss it with you. 
You can claim universal credit as we've said while you are in work, um, but please be aware of the general rule that for every one pound of earnings that you get, this generally reduces your universal credit by 63 pence. So your universal credit will in fact be modified in terms of your earnings. Uh, for every one pound of unearned income that you receive, such as for example a private pension, your universal credit will reduce by the same amount of one pound. There are other benefits out there that can also affect universal credit, for example the carer's allowance that many people are entitled to, and again this will reduce your universal credit by one pound for every pound of carer's allowance that you receive. So, when you come to do a calculation as to whether or not universal credit is right for you, there are a very broad range of circumstances to take into account um, and you need your advisor to go through each of those with you to be sure it is the correct route for yourself. Um, the more information that you give an advisor, obviously the more detailed advice they can give to you. Now when it comes to savings, uh, savings of up to £6,000 generally do not alter universal credit. Uh, savings of between 6,000 and 16,000, that's 1,600, will reduce your universal credit by £4.35 a month for every £250 of savings that you have, or part thereof. So that means that even if you don't meet that £250 savings increment, they will still reduce by £4.35. Over the £16,000 mark, there will be no payment of universal credit, but your claim may still be considered live as long as there is an underlying entitlement. So this may be for someone who is in full-time work, but who otherwise earns too much uh, to be on universal credit. Um, their claim would still be live, but they would receive no payment for that. So please remember that universal credit is designed to function also as a mechanism while you're out of work or in part-time work which means that there may be claimant conditions placed on you called conditionality. Uh, sometimes this conditionality can be to make yourself available for additional work or to prepare for additional work. Um, your conditionality of your claim will depend on your agreement with your work coach and your circumstances and you should be very clear that you have the right conditionality before you continue on with your claim. Um, this generally means that failure to abide by conditionality can lead to sanctions in your benefit, so it is extremely important that the conditionality is correct while you proceed in your claim. Now lastly, I'd like to talk, tell you about the advance loan. So universal credit is paid on a monthly basis, but your first payment does not come for five weeks, and that's usually paid in the first instance to your bank account. These can be changed by discussion with universal credit, and they're dependent on the region of the UK in which you live. From the date of your application, as we say, it goes off online and this will take five weeks for them to pay you. You are able to take an advance loan from the date of your application and this loan is essentially equal to the maximum amount of your estimated entitlement. So you will be able to take your estimated entitlement but please be aware that this loan uh, needs to be paid back, generally speaking, within one year. That's the expectation from the DWP and it is deducted at the rate of uh, one twelfth of whatever your entitlement was uh, when you took out the loan. So for example, a person with an estimated entitlement of £700 a month may well immediately have £58 deducted from their first payment and this will be deducted every month until the loan is paid back. So you're not obliged to take the advanced loan and I would generally encourage anyone coming to see me and to be very careful about considering it before they do so as there may be alternative options. So check with your advisor to see if those options are available to you. So in summary, if you think that you have entitlement from this description, you have your email and access to a good internet connection and you're able to get on regularly to the internet, then generally speaking you are able to proceed with a universal credit claim. The next video we're hoping to show you what the journal will look like once you've gone through the claim and of course at all stages you can seek out an advisor if you need help uh, in your area. So obviously that being said don't stress out too much about your claim and of course stay safe.